In this video, I'm gonna be showing you Llama Index, which is a simple and flexible data framework that connects custom data sources to large language models. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to access and interpret private data on large scales without having to retrain the underlying model with that newer set of data. So essentially what Llama Index does is it ingests the data from various sources, whether it's APIs, databases, uh, PDFs, um, through what are known as data connectors. And through those data connectors, it indexes those documents and embeds them, which we'll get into in just a moment. And by creating what's known as a RAG system or a retrieval augmented generation system, it combines the LLMs with that private knowledge base, which allows you to query those documents or APIs or databases or the combination of all of them. So it's a very powerful tool and it allows you to make applications such as QA systems, chatbots, uh, agents, those types of things. So I'm gonna show you their TypeScript implementation and I'm gonna run through two examples to get you started. So I just wanted to touch on this. So it's very similar to Langchain. I just wanted to show another example of one of these frameworks on my channel where I think they're doing really excellent work. So where Llama Index really caught my eye is on their social media feeds, they have really good content around RAG systems and some of the new approaches, these cutting edge approaches on how to actually query and embed documents, what works well, what doesn't, and the ranking of all of these different types of things. So definitely a really good option to check out on their social media if you're interested. So what you can do, I'm going to put all these links in the description of the video, but essentially there is a GitHub repository for both their Python implementation as well as their TypeScript implementation. You can go ahead and check these out. There's also a couple examples on here uh, to get you started, but there is also a, a TypeScript a documentation page where you can go ahead and look through what's all available right within their website as well. So in a lot of the examples, including the examples I'm going to be showing you here, you will need an OpenAI API key. So if you don't already have one, just head over to openai.com uh, slash platform slash API keys, I believe it is, or just Google API keys, OpenAI, get an API key. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to just init a, a simple project here. Uh, in our uh, folder, in our VS Code, and we're going to create a .env to start. So within your .env, just write out openai underscore api underscore key and paste in that key, just like you see there. So within the two examples, we're going to be running through one example where we query and are able to ask questions from one document. And then in this second example, I'm gonna show you how you can also do this with a directory of documents. So first to get started, just import FS to be able to use our file system with a node. Then next we're going to import two things from the Llama index library. We're gonna do structure a document as well as vector store index, which I'll touch on both of those in just a moment. Next, we're going to import .env and configure it to be able to reference our OpenAI API key. Then from there, we're just going to wrap everything within an asynchronous function. So all of these things will occur asynchronously. So we have to make sure that everything is happening one after another. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to read a simple file. So I just have the state of a union uh, address where it's a relatively long document that we'll be able to ask questions of. So from there, we're just going to create a new document instance. And this is going to be what we use to create our vector. Uh, or our vector store index rather. So the vector store index, essentially what this portion does is it's taking that document or series of documents and it's breaking it up into uh, smaller little chunks. And from those little chunks, it's querying the OpenAI embeddings endpoint. And essentially what's being returned is this array of different numbers. And those numbers are a representation of the similarity uh, between each other. So you can think of the same an example of say something like zoo animals, those will be closer together than say if you could query like a zoo animal and like something arbitrary like a car or types of cars or something. So it's essentially mapping the relatedness and the similarity between words or tokens. 
So next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to convert that vector store index into a query engine. And this is going to be how we actually ask the question of the document. So we're going to just simply ask what were the highlights within the document, and then we're going to log out that response. So if I save out the file here and I just run node one for our first example, we can see here that we don't have the example text being referenced properly. So I'm just going to go ahead, put that here, run it one more time. So essentially what it's doing each time that you run this, you are going to be embedding everything within the, that particular text file. So it's combing through, it's getting the top results from that document. And here it essentially is giving us somewhat of a summary of the high level overview of what was discussed within that document. So within the next document, it's very similar. We're going to import FS, we're going to import document vector store index, and this time also simple directory reader. So it just goes to show how simple of an implementation that this is or, or, or is to use, I should say, uh, because being able just to point a uh, folder within your application that you want to have read and embedded and all of that, it makes setting these things up really simple, right? So again, we're going to import .env just like we did. We're going to set up our asynchronous function. And then here we're just going to point to the directory that we want read. So in our directory, we have two files. And the two files that I put in here are actually just the files that I'm using for the example. So I'm going to be using these and asking question. There's just a simple question in the demonstration here. So we're going to be setting up our directory reader. Then similar to the document reader, we're going to have our directory reader and load all of the files within the directory path. So again, we're going to break up all of the documents into chunks. We're going to embed them and create a vector store for them. Then from there, just like in the first example, we're going to create another query index. And this time, what we're going to be doing is we're going to iterate through all of them. And I'm just going to ask the question of each document, explain this code to me as if I was five years old, and then we're going to run that function. So if I just go ahead and say node two and run that, what it's doing here is these files, like I said, are the exact two files here explaining what I just explained here. So if we look at the results here, you can see the first result came in and then the second result came in and it's just going through and iterate or not iterating, but it's just going through and explaining um, the documents, uh, answering that question for each of them. So say if you had a hundred different files here in this particular example, it would loop through these and give you them one by one as it came up with results. So that's pretty much it. This is just a basic example on how you can get started with something like Llama Index, but hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.